Then we finally have something like dualism. So where are we now dualism from? From quantum mechanics. Where uh, it's in the last um, 10 or 20 years, it became very popular to, 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 to do serving on the river because this river creates a standing wave. We will see if they are uh, ignite their afterburners when the flames are uh, um, shooting out of, uh, of the exhaust of the jet turbine. Then we can see this lighter parts like discs or diamonds. And um, also we have these shock diamonds. They are also visible. And so you can see the gas looks like this. Welcome to Fractal Aerodynamics. Another episode of the Fractal Fluid Model today. Now we have Chapter 6. My name is Felix Schaller and I'm host of this channel. The topic of this uh, Chapter 6 now is compressible fluids. So in the last 6 or last 5 uh, chapters, we were exclusively talking about fluid dynamics that are happening on incompressible fluids. Now we are turning over into the field of compressible fluids and then we will see what will happen there as additional effects that are not present in the incompressible effects of the fluid. So follow me to this exciting journey in compressible fluids where effects are happening that are not known in the incompressible parts. So, what have all these things to do with each other and the relation of compressible fluids or fluid model that is compressible? We can see here we have a rocket engine, um, a surface wave and a laser. Um, this comes a bit later. So, but first, starting with uh, those applications like uh, surfers and uh, rocket engines. So, you maybe uh, can remember, well, just for the camera, now I have to destroy this very beautiful picture again. And um, just as, as you saw what we are going to talk about. So, surfer, or oh, bye bye. And my little astronaut with the laser gun say farewell. Okay, you maybe remember in our earlier chapters we were intensively talking about these Venturi events when we are, were discussing about potential theories. So, so what we um, found out as a constrict, uh, contradiction is that when we are having a high pressure here, um, that is Opposing this uh, constriction in the tube, so this is a tube and this is an exit. So we have a little ventile here that is uh, constriction into the, in the tube section with a smaller diameter. So um, we all know that um, if we are a little bit familiar with uh, fluid dynamics and Bernoulli and Venturi, that um, um, the same amount of uh, fluid has to go through every section at by the same time, which means that here we need a little bit of speed up. So, so therefore, our uh, or from the old days, the scientists uh, stated that we have a potential that um, has to solve the energy equation. 
But as we found out in the earliest chapters, that this causes a contradiction in the mechanical system where um, we would receive no dynamic situation. So if you don't know about that, just watch the uh, earlier chapters. I give a link in uh, the video above um, and then you can find them easily. But I will not so far repeat um, this, but but we, we all know that, or we, especially in the chapter four, where we're talking about energy conservation, we were um, figuring out, or we, we showed that, that the, the pressure on the other side cannot be um, established due to our mechanical contradictions or these conditions that requires, if we require dynamic situation of acceleration that then cannot allow uh, a re-establish of the pressure. So, so we also, in the last chapter, um, we, we proposed this or we, we gave a solution how to solve this by a rotation momentum that um, the kinetic energy remains also, the, the, the transport speed goes back to the, to the normal average transport speed. This causes a pressure drop. So we have a pressure drop, like um, I better do it in uh, below our Venturi. So here we have a high pressure by acceleration, the pressure drops because of mass inertia requiring uh, opposing force and then we are um, in the middle of the cross-section pressure stays constant but then when this cross-section opens up the um, the pressure um, the pressure is not re-established due to uh, the reasons I, I stated in the last chapters so we even have low pressure here uh, because of uh, potential vortices that are creating even lower pressure. Um, but just keep it simple. We leave, uh, we, we, we remain at the lower level of pressure. And so we have this uh, little gap that is now kinetic energy. And um, is uh, not re-established. So because the reason um, is because we do not have an energy, um, uh, put the possibility to store energy in this, in this fluid. If it's incompressible, we cannot store energy by pressing the fluid together and then by expanding the, the, the energy is released again. But because we have, um, a nearly incompressible fluid, fluid that cannot store any energy by expanding or compressing um, or by any other means. You know, usually in a mechanic, um, in mechanics, um, there's there's um, tension forces, tension forces that can, like in a spring, that can take energy by when they are um, getting pressed together and then they can release it again. So also with air, we know it also when we, when we pump up a, a, a tire, something like that, it can, it can store energy by high pressure. And then when we release it, uh, or in the pressure tank, then we release it, we release the energy of this pressure tank and um, the flume uh, is not in a, in a way expanding, uh, as such, but the gas itself is, is um, reducing its density by expanding itself. So when you compress our gas, then we automatically increase the density of the gas. Um, and by that, store the energy inside the gas. So, so, so maybe someone would come up, well, Big. Water also can store a little bit of energy, 
But if if we um, I will I will show some charts uh, over here and even uh, in a bigger version that that when you look look clearly that even if you have um, hundred bars of pressure uh, the, the, the the compression of the of the water is just uh, some some um, one or two percent or very little so so the the, the it has, it can store um, it, it can store energy and but but it, according to this pressure we usually um, th those usually occur in the, in these situations we do not deal with thousands of uh, bars of pressure but usually with um, with pressure levels below one bar e even so so th that's really um, uh, neglectable um, effects we have here almost neglect neglectable effects uh, when we talking about water and um, nearly compressible uh, fluids we we also or and um, but it, but it becomes different when we have gases so so let's say um, our energy releases and uh, by that um, we also um, have an expansion of, of, of the gas but as we know it from um, from um, wave theories that the, the, um, the transport speed C is dependent on, um, on mass and the capability how, how well, how strong, how, how resistant um, the material um, is against compression. So the, the stronger um, uh, or the stronger the, the spring force in, in this material, so if you have a um, like a chain of uh, chain chain of of um, feather mass systems, and you have a chain of feather mass systems. Then so we have the, the mass spring mass spring mass spring, and so on. So we when we just um, trigger this mass and then it first will um, transport its momentum onto the spring and then slowly that, 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 uh, that momentum gets transformed to the next mass uh, according to force so momentum equals force times speed. Ah, sorry, T time. So, so as much a force is opposed to, um, or the mass is opposed over time, then um, then the momentum gets trans trans transferred from uh, from from this to the next, and then. And then we were just uh, stopping uh, the force application, and then, and then the the force is no longer trans trans transferred further, but the already induced uh, forces is trans transported further. Then we get a little impulse here, and then it starts. So we have a little wave that is traveling. So our, our pulse is traveling through this feather mass system. And uh, but this but this um, this feather uh, this this the um, the speed is not proportional to to the um, expansion of of um, the the water like like with, which is which is um, um, the pressure is. Uh, um, uh, a dynamic pressure is um, is proportional to v uh, versus um, uh, 
So it's um, so it's um, proportional to uh, v squared, but um, but it's uh, but it's not um, that has not nothing to do with um, with our transport speed speed uh, here. So when we when we have um, When we have this feather mass system, the momentum is traveling through the through the, the wave. Um, and it is dependent on how strong these these feathers are. Uh, if they if they have a, a strong tension, then the the, um, the travel speed C is is um, is bigger than uh, than with a with a with a lower tension, but the 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 travel the travel speed is independent of um, of our expansion of of the fluid itself in in this constriction because this is dependent on the diameter and um, the pressure difference, while the um, the expansion speed um, of of the density of, of let's say we have air that this is this is um, dependent on the air pressure and the mass of the of the air. So we know speed of sound c is, is around is around three. 360 meters per second and when we when we look at this um, speed compared to our travel speed which is usually for for a um, release pressure then we we, we 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 will see that this is traveling in a much slower speed so so our travel speed we call it u and um, this is c so u is much much smaller than our um, c that is for air around 360 meter per second so what happens here is then when we re release that pressure in our ventile, then the fluid starts to um, to produce noise. So every acoustic expert knows or that where there is. Um, where there's a pressure difference um, happening, then also um, sound is created. You just can easily um, experiment by yourself with a, a long stick like a whip. You know, when you whip the um, when you whip the stick through the air, it will create a noise. You know? So this is this 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 is caused by by a carmonic uh, vortex street. This is behind the the stick itself that is creating vortices. And so Karaman vortex street, um, everybody knows. Um, I I hope. Um, is behind an object and when the air flows around then it produces an instable situation where it creates vortices and these vortices they are always in opposing direction so so they are traveling so 
So once that the air is, is passing more over this side of the of the stick, and then the other times it's traveling uh, this this time all around the stick. It's also if you have a chimney, wind passes by, then um, it's often can happen that you destroy those chimneys, and um, finally the chimney goes down. That's why you will see often uh, in modern chimneys that they have such a, a snake um, shape around around the tube that is uh, disturbing the, the vortices in smaller vert vert vortices that this situation cannot happen. So going back to the stick, when we whip it, we create such vortices, and these vortices represent a, a pressure drop. So because of the centrifugal forces, they are happening inside, um, they, they pull out the mass from the center, and like a carousel, and uh, therefore uh, we have a lower pressure in the middle and uh, then, then outside. So, so this represents a pressure drop, which is then producing those noises that are expanded in the in the environment. So this is, as you could say, also a little bit of loss of energy because of this this um, this expanding waves in the environment, and also the reason why um, you, when when there's um, uh, pressured air um, released from a vent ventile, then you hear this noise while when you go on the water and there is water running out of uh, of such a, a ventile you you most likely won't hear anything this is the, re the the reason is because there is not no such um pressure release that is causing um those those additional uh, wave So, going back to the starting reason to, uh, to claim that the energy source of the potential for the potential theory is density uh, of, the, of, the mat, of, the mat, of the matter, of the fluid itself, that expands and that by releases the energy and then contracts again. So this is, this is um, not true. No? Because we have a contradiction between the, the travel speed of the of the fluid and the, uh, and the, the, the final or the, the actual um, travel speed of or the of the waves. So this these waves are much traveling much faster than our our fluid speed, and um, the expansion speed c um, is much. Well, it's um, well. We leave it a scalar, um, a scalar value at the moment, because it's not. Ha it's another vector. At the, um, it's um, oh, it should be a vector. Whatever. So because because the the travel speed is much faster, um, so we have this noise and um, these waves are getting released, and it only happens uh, in compressed uh, on compressible fluids, but not with incompressible fluids because they don't store energy. So the argument that is the, the potential energy uh, potential theory can explain with uh, with the density of the ma matter, um, the fluid matter, is is uh, by that uh, disproven. Um, uh, by argument, not mathematically, it would be a bit more complicated. It, it, we talk more about the 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 general ideas here. So, 
So but there is another, there is another um, a potential field we have. It's also mostly used in fluid dynamics, uh, in, in the st standard and the basic fluid dynamics. So we often also calculate with the gravity. So gravity is also potential. So when we have a, uh, um, a bullet or um, a sphere that rolls that rolls on on a surface um, like like on a roller coaster. So so we have something like that. All right, so when we have our bullet that is um, rolling on our roller coaster, then um, it's, it's truly, it's truly um, exact or it's, it's truly um, appropriate the argumentation of the potential field. So this is also where the, the argumentation for fluid dynamics comes from to argue with a, such a potential field like the gravity field that allows when I move in the gravity field that has a certain energy level. Huh? So here it's higher energy and here's lower energy. Um, that when we move in this field, then the, the potential energy in this field gets converted into kinetic energy and then back, back, back again into the, the potential field of, of the gravity. So when we move in this in this um, gravity field, then we can speed up um, and then also slow down. It's also done with some overtaking uh, maneuvers in the space, um, also with satellite um, uh, swing by maneuvers and such things. I la um, later come with the swing by maneuvers. It also has maybe some relation to the three-body system in the last chapter, but it would go too far. Leave it like that. We move in the gravity system, uh, gravity field, and this potential field, we, we can um, accelerate and de-accelerate. De so where there's a good example of uh, a combination of both of the potential um, field effects and the simple mechanic effects, the potential free effects that are explained in the earliest chapter with the incompressible, incompressible fluids. So, so we have now uh, introduction of, of uh, potential effects that um, get into correlation with the uh, potential free effects. So then we finally have something like dualism. So where we now dualism from? From quantum mechanics. So no, mostly dualism is known from so in quantum mechanics we know either uh, the impulse of, uh, of a particle or the, 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 the position. Um, but not both. So, so we can just say either we, we know the impulse or we know the position and that's where this, all this, this, um, this paradox come from that, that uh, um, quantum mechanics makes such um, paradox and mysterious and till today uh, we not really know the, the secret behind it. So, but we can all already figure out that similar effects or at least dualistic effects like potential effects and potential free effects are happening in fluid. And um, where, can, where can we see those um, uh, best in operation? Yes, where uh, we have a potential field or where, something where the um, expansion speed, the, the, the wave speed is um, the same speed, so we don't have this situation like um, uh, fluid speed much smaller than, than the, the wave speed. 
and um, to have a situation where both are mostly equal um, so u is equal c um, as for instance in rivers so there comes our surfer um, So there's a very famous river in Munich where I come from, nearby the, the, the big park, the English Garden, where uh, it's in the last um, 10 or 20 years, it became very popular to, 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 to do serving on the river because this river creates a standing wave. So the wave is caused because we have a river that comes with a significant flow speed and there is a drop. So it comes uh, under a bridge so people can watch from above and the river is going and it drops in, in, in a certain height level. And because of that, that level uh, of this drop, this, the, 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 the fluid gets speed up in the gravity field. So, gravity field. And because of um, there, there are already um, fluid particles that are existent here, the, they, they, um, they collide with each other and transport the momentum from from um, so so this speed is um, with a slower speed and then by because of momentum exchange so so um, this fluid mass particles um, are, coll are colliding with with the slower particles and um, by that pile up uh, a wave. So, so by that the flow speed goes back to the original u1, u1 and this is u2. Uh, let's say u2, u2, All right. So this, this uh, u2 speed goes back to the u1 speed, so slows down, but then because of momentum exchange, is speeding up particles again to U2 speed. And then they start over again, colliding again, again with, with, um, with um, with slower particles pile up again in the gravity field field slow down and store the energy in the gravity field so because of their their level of height is is again at this level the the particle will then um, be sl being slowed down but to the to the original speed which it had initially so and this effect goes 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 further so we we finally create a standing wave that is always um, changing the um, the speed um or this, this, this fluid is always changing the speed from from speed one from v, uh, to uh, speed two, and finally because of uh, our friction effects, it 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 it, 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 
it is left by um, yeah uh, with v one, but uh, with the so so the energy that is 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 dampened out uh, or or re absorbed by the friction. Um, but if this uh, wouldn't be absorbed by the by the viscosity, uh, the this this wave would go on and on. <clears throat> but the, the 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 remarkable thing to note um, uh, this is a standing wave because of this effect that it travels uh, it it is getting accelerated and deaccelerated in a in a certain um, frequency that is. Um, Dependent by the um, um, acceleration, acceleration speed of the gravity um, and the flow speed of the water itself. So, by this example of um, of um, of water, we can we can uh, explain. Uh, or we we, sh we can show this both this effects both effects are are interacting here it's mostly the potential um, related effects are uh, in in action where we have this make this potential free effects not so much in action um, because of uh, there's no constriction in in a way here we would yeah so there's there's not so much constriction, so we have mostly potential related effects in, in this fluid condition because of the gravity field. So this gravity field is for us our energy energy container or energy storage, where it always is energy is exchanged, um, kinetic and potential energy after the the situation. So 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 also to see. Once released, this energy, it's always like um, uh, oscillating back and forth in this, in this uh, situation between uh, high uh, kinetic energy and low kinetic energy. All right, now we can convert the same situation in, in, into uh, air. Where um, when we when we accelerate gas up to the speed of sound, then we also have um, the situation that our travel or expansion speed is the same as our um, as as our travel speed of air. So so the expansion speed is is equal to c. So then we also, when we when when we uh, observe pictures of um, of jet fighters and also other um, jet engines, we will see if they are uh, ignite their afterburners when the flames are uh, um, shooting out of uh, of the exhaust of the jet turbine then we can see this lighter parts like discs or diamonds that are piling up or this is piled up um, fire plasma that um, has a higher density than um, the other parts of here so so we also see standing waves are so mostly standing while the the, the 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 exhaust gases are traveling with with the speed of sound out of the exhaust of this um, jet engine. So so we have we can also see this 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 effect where where there's these shock waves because of that that um, here it's now um, because of the speed of sound we not have the gravity but now the density the pressure density that is now creating that effect that. Um, the same way that the gravity field is doing it with waves that uh, is storing energy and then expanding and storing and so on. So it's also this um, spring effect, but because of it's um, the same 
it is in the same value as the, the exact expansion speed is the, is the um, flow speed. The, um, they are they're standing waves, so so the so these these pressure waves are standing because of the, the, the this equality. We see it especially in in uh, rocket engines. So when we have our burner chamber and then we have our Laval vent and then it comes this parabolic bell shape of uh, of this uh, conventional conventional um, rocket engine. So here we have our fluid fuel um, expanded and um, creating this pressure. And here it's um, It's um, very impressive or very interesting um, fact that that at this part of the the vent, the va va Laval jet or Laval vent, um, is that that the speed can only be Mach Mach one. So so we have um, slow speed because of expansion, and then at this at this part, um, the speed is always Mach one because, or why is it that that way? Because because of uh, the shock wave. So, uh, or the uh, the simple fact of gases that the, the speed of sound comes because of the travel speed of the air particles. So, so the air particles can only expand or flow at the same speed uh, of sound because because they are uh, traveling at the speed of sound so so then you would say well then all rocket engine can only um, go by a thousand meters per second a uh, thousand uh, three hundred meters per second but um, Mach 1 is not related uh, to the, um, the co constant speed out, um, and the speed of sound is also not constant, but it is also dependent on pressure and um, pressure and heat, so temperature and uh, and both factors are influencing the the um, thermodynamic conditions for uh, for the the, the the particle speed or the the, the sound speed in this compressed um, gas so so comp so in this the the speed of sound is much higher we you we remember um, at the beginning I was talking about feather mass system uh, and we we said that when the tension of these feathers are stronger that the expansion speed is faster so so the same is with with gases when when you have a more stronger compressed gas which are also more hotter or has more heat, then then also the tr the, the, the 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 speed c is is faster. Now it comes an interesting fact or interesting part where um, where we now then can put both parts together. So so the more potential. Uh, related parts and the potential free parts, especially in this rocket engine. All right. Now we have uh, gas with high pressure, and uh, then finally P2, which is, I um, would say, atmospheric pressure, um, PA. We, we call it PA, atmospheric pressure. And also, this is a, a quite important fact about designing uh, of of uh, rocket engines. So now, when we come to the bell-shaped rocket engines, the expansion. So when we have a constant speed, constant acceleration, acceleration goes into um, a times 
t uh, goes into v and um, uh, v square so so that's um, that's the reason uh, why why this this um, this rocket engine have a parabolic shape is because of they are getting expanded um, in in a or the gas is getting expanded um, constantly until the, to the point where pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. Then we have a, the pressure is fully expanded. Um, oh, actually, the, the, the acceleration is slowing down because finally we will we receive the level of of the atmospheric pressure. Then we have no further acceleration um, by expansion. So, so then we, all our um, uh, energy of the gas expansion is, is fully, fully um, released. And then, and then we only can rely on the, on the uh, potential free effects. And then we remember potential free effects in the last chapter they have pot hyperbolic nature. So what happens of, or what is the really important um, um, design criteria in rocket engines is then when they, when they operate in, um, under uh, atmospheric pressure, then finally we can receive flow separation at the end of our um, rocket bell, because of the fluid wants to accelerate further, um, because of the potential free effects, the, um, but the gas already has expanded to its maximum, uh, to up to the atmospheric pressure, and then um, we we receive flow detachment that uh, we're, we're getting reverse flows like uh, on a stall on, on an airplane where we have stall on the on the upper surface. So our flow is detaching and that can destroy a, such a, a rocket engine because of that effects that create that creates um, pressure drops and then vibrations and these vibrations can destroy that that bell and finally the, the entire engine. So, so the important or the, the interesting thing is then now um, we further go into this hyperbolic behavior of the fluid um, acceleration because we have no more expansion. We go by the cross section uh, of, the, of, of the fluid that uh, only the same the same amount of fluid is going to the same cross section but because of the, the air is is still um, accelerating um, we still receive or because of that there is this um, popping or this dropping um, uh, this this flow detachment of the fluid um, from the surface happening and um, also we have these shock diamonds. They are also visible. And so you can see the gas looks like this. Um, and the idea would be, and, and also that's, that's a, the important thing of designing um, rocket engines, because when you're on outer space, you have um, zero pressure. And then it often you can observe that the gas expansion that the rocket engine then starts to flow out instead of contracts um, further um, onto a hyperbolic shape, but more um, because of the pressure is so so low, um, the gas expands uh, in the maximum it is capable uh, to do or 
the, the bell shape itself wouldn't be or is smaller than, than um, the expansion opportunity of the gas. So, <clears throat> but because, because of you don't want to destroy your engine, you design it smaller for the, for the, for the more atmospheric parts, but in the space you create bigger bell shapes in comparison. Um, that's why sometimes uh, engineers go went for the for this um, kind of blade design of rocket engines, where they 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 expand the gas and ex and actually create exactly this hyperbolic shape we we see here. But the disadvantage is because, because of the, um, we cannot make use of that part. So, so this, this bell-shaped part, which is expanding the, the pressure from, from the air, you have just very little parts of that that are capable to, to do the uh, air expansion. And the other uh, part of the engine is mostly left for, for this um, blade or pinch design. As I would propose, because air has a certain speed, it would make sense if engineeringly or technically feasible that you design channels in the side of a rocket that when you um, when you have this bell shape from outside visible um, you create certain opening channels that are avoiding that the gas is capable to enter because of speed so the, 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 the fruit inertia just a bit more clearer visible So then, when we have this uh, a wind, wind at, at higher pressure and at atmospheric pressure, um, it is not. It doesn't matter if uh, if if um, if the atmospheric pressure is already re, uh, um, achieved at that point, because then um, we can introduce air from outside in the bell shape. would enable, if we have lower pressure, air to flow inside and contribute to the hyperbolic flow. All right. When we have designed such a bell, bell engine that has um, channels uh, at the side, so again, picture. This also could cool uh, the outer parts or the, the, the outer parts of the of, of the rocket engine and also induce uh, additional airflow inside the um, the jet that um, would also decrease the the noise because we all know uh, if we have already watched some starting of rocket engines they create an incredible noise. And the noise is also because of the same high pressure difference between the gases causing, um, first of all, um, a low pressure difference, a uh, pressure drop, and by that, um, lots of energy is getting lost because of um, noise creation in the environment. 
and um, in the same way we re we reduce the noise by um, by by normal passenger planes. Um, if you observe new modern passenger planes, they have this triple van, and the new design has a bit saw shape, like. Um, trailing edge, and this trailing edge is also not also you can also see it by modern modern wind turbines. For instance, Enercon has it at the trailing edge. They also designed this um, uh, saw, saw saw blade uh, so trailing edge that is um, in a way um, giving a transition zone of um, of uh, low speed with uh, here high speed. So in this in this zone, um, there's also a pressure different, and by because of of uh, speed of speed difference, we create vortices, and these vortices, as we already heard in the uh, earlier in this uh, section, um, also create noise because of that pressure difference. So, so here we get um, a shearing of fluids and this shearing of fluids automatically creates this Kelvin Helmholtz um, uh, vortex, vortex street because of the shearing of the fluids. And the same is this with, uh, with wind turbine blades. Also, with the wing, wings of, of owls, owls have also a bit of sawtooth um, trailing edge feathers and um, inducing uh, air at the side in rocket engines uh, when they are in the atmospheric uh, condition would also, uh, to my opinion, um, make them more energy efficient because um, this inducing of air also, uh, first lowers the, the, um, the noise, induces air um, in a certain transition uh, zone or in a in a in a gradient uh, in a in a wider gradient. So you have a wider speed gradient between zero speed and speed well speed high. Or the gas speed, and because also uh, the, the, the the transition zone um, is is larger, same as with passenger flight with the turbo vans, they have a, a larger transition zone between the high speed jet in the middle and uh, and the outer air because of this turbo van has a slower um, um, speed of the air jet than the inner a part of this turbo van. Uh, this also makes the, these engines very energy efficient um, in comparison to jet engine. But the, the difference between turbo vans and jet engine is that um, jet engines or for supersonic airplanes require to um, receive speeds higher than Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3, and then finally rocket engines are uh, much faster. But this is not an argument, uh, to my opinion, that you not um, should use flow induce, in, inducing um, to in, to increase energy efficiency and noise reduction, um, fluid saving, and so on. That's I would say for today. Um, mostly about dualism of fluids. So. I hope you enjoyed the session and um, well there's uh, I would say lots more connection between uh, fluids dualism and quantum dualism that has to be researched uh, further. Um, I think there would be uh, will be a, a very exciting connection between these two um, parts of physics and um, we'll see what we can figure out uh, in further episodes about this correlation or this connection between these two parts of fluids and fluid and uh, quantum mechanics. Also with rocket engines and so on. 
All right. Thank you for tuning in and hope you, I see you next time. Bye-bye.